Hello friends and acquaintances, and hello people who have never seen me before and just happened to stumble across this. I'm sure there's at least one of you, but lovely to see you. Uh, I realize it's been a long, long time since I've done a bookshelf tour. Like, I think I did one in, like, 2018, maybe? <laughs> maybe 2019? And it's been a long time since then. I have different bookshelves, I have a lot of different books, so I figured, eh, let's just go over that in excruciating detail. So this right here is the bookshelf that you can see right next to me in most of my videos. Up here we have the plushie of myself, which unfortunately our campaign for that did fail. Everyone should have gotten refunded. Uh, if you didn't, let me know, because I'm not in charge of that, but, you know, there's that. Uh, this is just some of my dad's stuff from when he was in the Air Force, but that's not important. The actual books. So this shelf here is all fantasy and science fiction stuff, uh, which I have a lot more than just this shelf, by the way. First up, I have the Southern Victory series, or at least a couple books from it, by Harry Turtledove. So I have How Few Remain, and then I have the Great War Trilogy, and that covers uh, basically from the end of the American Civil War up until the end of World War I. However, uh, there's also another series called the American Empire series, which covers the interwar period and the rise of fascism and stuff. And then Settling Accounts covers World War II, and I have read those, but I don't own them, you know? And then we have Game of Thrones, the whole Song of Ice and Fire series right here. I've, I have this weird cover with, like, one of the others on it, the White Walkers on it. Uh, I don't care for it, but, you know, all the others, I have the more classic cover where it's just, like, a crown and stuff, which I'm okay with. Uh, but, you know, the, I have... The entire series, let's be honest, we're never getting anything after the first five. And then I have The Summoner, which is book one of the Chronicles of the Necromancer. Now this one I got a long time ago. I read like the first 80 pages of it and thought it was fine, but I just wound up having to stop and move on to other stuff at the time. And I, I, I want to get back to it at some point, but I just haven't had the time. Actually, if you've read The Chronicles of the Necromancer, let me know if that one's any good. Then I've got The Stand by Stephen King, which is just ludicrously thick. Look, look, you can see this. And th this particular copy was in my backpack when I was like 18 years old and it rained really hard so that's why it's got all the ink on it there. It just got wet. It happens. And the stand is like, man, I have such mixed feelings on it because I really want to love it but I just can't because it's got too many weird things in it but overall I did like it at least. Then after that we have the uh, Broken Empire Trilogy. I was about to say Prince of Thorns, but that's just the first book. It's Prince of Thorns, King of Thorns, Emperor of Thorns, which I did a review on this earlier this year, and the author, Mark Lawrence, actually apparently saw it and was happy with it, so that was actually a really nice moment, but this is a really good, interesting series. Like, I guess this bookshelf tour is kind of turning into a recommendation video, but I, yeah, sure, why not? It's a book tour and a recommendation video. There you go. Prince of Thorns, if you've never read it, is basically an epic fantasy story, but it's told from the perspective of a villain, or told from the perspective of somebody who would be a villain in most traditional fantasy stories. Uh, like, the main character, Jorg, is a horrible, horrible person, and some people just can't deal with that while reading it. Like, it just makes them feel dirty when they're in there, so I don't blame you if you can't deal with that, but if you think you can, then you should check it out, because they're really, really good books. And after that, I have a couple of fighting fantasy books. Now, these are kind of weird. I have, like, three of them. Scorpion Swamp, Citadel of Chaos, and uh, Demons of the Deep, all of which are enjoyable enough. Basically, it's like a one-person D&D campaign where you, like, create a character and you make rolls for attacks and health and stuff. It's kind of fun. It's, it's less complicated than that. But it's basically that combined with a choose-your-own-adventure book because it'll have stuff like, oh, do you go left or do you go right? Do you try to talk him down or do you just instantly attack him? You know, that sort of thing. And there's also uh, on Steam, there's a couple of these that are just digital versions. And I mean, they have, they're, they vary in terms of quality, let's say. Like some of them are really, really fun. Like Demons of the Deep is a great one. And Scorpion Swamp is fun. But Citadel of Chaos is pretty eh, iffy. And some of the others are as well. But I don't know. I, I really loved them when I was younger. And these are in like really bad nasty beat up conditions so it's not like I can sell them and I don't feel comfortable donating them either so just I have them forever now. Okay and after that we will move on to the second shelf. So right here I have Age of Myth and Age of Swords which are the first two books in the Legends of the First Empire. Now I read Age of Myth a couple years ago, did talk about it and I really liked it but I never 
got around to Age of Swords. I'm going to do that at some point, or, or Age of Swords or the whole rest of the series for that matter, uh, because it was really, really interesting because it's like a fantasy world where, but humans are like this oppressed minority by what are essentially elves. And I don't know, I just, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> and it worked well in that first book, but it's also been such a long time since I read it, I would probably need to reread it. And it's just, ugh, man, there's so many things. There's so many things to read, man. Uh, and then I got Name of the Wind. You should know my thoughts on that. It's a good enough book, but the sequel is terrible. Uh, I have The Lies of Locke Lamora here, which I have not read yet. I'm going to try sooner or later. Again, like, you're going to hear me say that a lot. Like, yeah, this, this is good. I, it looks fun, but I just I haven't read it yet. I haven't gotten around to it. So I, I don't know. Just Lies of Locke Lamora, I've heard many good things, but just it's I haven't gotten around to it. There's only so many hours in the day. And then I have The Fifth Sorceress. Now, I did own all three books for a while, back when I did my whole long spiel on these, which is almost three hours in total. Uh, but I only kept the first book, because the first book is the only one that's, like, enjoyably bad. The others are just painful to get through. Uh, and then The Black Prism, which is the first Lightbringer book, I have that too. Again, I owned all five books at one point, but they just got so shitty that I was just like, okay, I'm just... I don't want these taking up space, so I just got rid of all of them, uh, including books two and three, which I still enjoyed quite a bit. Uh, but for whatever reason, I just decided to keep hold of book one. I don't know. I, I might, again, get rid of this at some point, you know, donate it, sell it, something, but I just, I don't know. I can't bring myself to do it right now. And then after that, all of this, uh, this is all Cosmere stuff. I have the original Mistborn trilogy. I have uh, Era 2, so we have Alloy of Law, Shadows of Self. Excuse me, Bands of Mourning and The Lost Metal, which, eh, if you know my thoughts on The Lost Metal. Like, uh, original Mistborn trilogy is phenomenal. The Era 2 is also great in different ways, but then you, you reach The Lost Metal and, like, it's good on its own, but the fact that it tries so hard to tie into the rest of the Cosmere just really, really made it a disappointing finale to that part of the story. And then Elantris, which is criminally underrated. Warbreaker, which is, it, it, it's accurately rated. <laughs> People don't like Warbreaker as much for good reason. Uh, and then Arcanum Unbounded, which is a collection of like short stories and novellas from the Cosmere. Now, this is not all of the Cosmere. Uh, you'll see my Stormlight Archive books are out in my living room, actually. Uh, but I, I am actually pretty far behind on the Cosmere at this stage. Like, I haven't read any of the secret projects or anything like that. So I guess just, uh, uh, I don't know, stay tuned. I'll get to those one day. And now we have the final row, which is right along the floor here. It's kind of hard to find a good angle to uh, film this at. But uh, again, this, this whole shelf is fantasy sci-fi, so if you're expecting something different here, uh, you're going to be disappointed. So here I have the first Dune book, which, I mean, what, what do I even need to say about Dune? Like, it's a classic for good reason. It has some issues. It is a little weirdly written by modern standards, and the sequels go off the wall, but first book is a great solid read. And then I have the first two Powder Mage books here, like I have Promise of Blood and The Crimson Campaign, which were the only two really good ones, to be honest. Like the third one was not a complete disaster by any means, but it was kind of disappointing. I, I don't even know exactly what happened. It was just, it was missing something, you know? And then I have the Zombie Chronicles, or rather, I have the first three books of the Zombie Chronicles, and then I have the last three books. So the, all the ones in the middle are missing. It's uh, 12 books in total. But this was written by Darren Shan, who is still my favorite author. And this one's really interesting because it's a zombie apocalypse story, and it came out back when those were really, really big and really popular. Uh, but it is told from the perspective of one of the zombies. And I know that's a spoiler for the first book, but I just, I'm sorry, there's, there's no other way to put it. Like, it's told from the perspective of one of the zombies, and it's kind of incredible, and I refuse to go into more detail, but you can see individually the books are not that long. They're they're pretty thin. You can get through them quickly, and actually there's a lot of illustrations in there too, so, you know, again, you can get through them quickly. They're enjoyable reads. I, I would check it out if that appeals to you at all. And then I have Metro 2033. I, this one's great. I have very little to say about it. I remember I tried reading it way back when the first video game came out, and it was really, really hard to get a hold of English copies back then, but the games were successful enough that now there's a bunch of them. And I still haven't read the sequels. I don't know if I ever will, because that's a pretty complete story, but eh, I don't know, we'll see. And then, uh, 
this is actually a book I recommended in my shorts a little while ago, which if you don't watch my shorts, you, sh you should. I, I release them occasionally. I talk about recommendations and stuff, but this is Bowl of Heaven and its sequel, Ship Star. It's like two in one. Uh, this is about people on a generation ship who are traveling to another star system who get woken up because they find a giant, like, half of a sphere cupping a star, and it's traveling somewhere, and they don't know exactly what it is. And I don't want to give away any more than that, because just finding out what this thing is and why it was built is the main mystery of the series. And then we also have uh, the third book in the series, Glorious, right here, which was, eh, a bit disappointing. That's why I haven't really talked about this series a whole lot more, other than just recommending the first couple books. And then I've got Percy Jackson and the Olympians, all right, all, all five books right here. I used to have Heroes of Olympus and Kane Chronicles and the Magnus Chase books as well, but I don't see myself ever rereading those, and I don't have as much love and nostalgia for them as I do for the original Percy Jackson series, so I figured, eh, I just either donated or them or sold them a while ago, and I figured some other kid can read them and enjoy them. Now, then we have a book by Chris Evans! Not the Captain America one, just some, some other fantasy author who is named Chris Evans. Uh, it's A Darkness Forged in Fire, book one of the Iron Elves. This is another one where I tried to read it. I got like 100 pages in, and I just, I, I remember nothing about what I read in that whole period. Like, I, I feel like nothing happened that whole time. But, I don't know, something about it still intrigues me, so I haven't gotten rid of it. Like, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll get back to reading it and do something with it someday, but for now, it's just... I, I have nothing to say. Then we have Pariah. The, the less said about Pariah, the better. <laughs> you know my thoughts on Pariah. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, then we got People of the Raven, which is... If nothing else, it's an interesting concept. Because, like, this, this is a whole big series of a bunch of books that are not really connected. There's, like, People of the Wolf, People of uh, the Sea. Uh, uh, I am suddenly drawing a blank on all of the others, but... It's uh, stories about American Indians from before uh, contact with the Old World, you know, before the Europeans came. And this one is supposed to be from, like, 9000 BCE or something. And it's about, well, basically it's about, like, a group of white people who somehow wound up in North America, which sounds kind of strange when you say it out loud, but I don't know. It's, it's an interesting idea. And I want to get around to reading it one day. Because I read the first book in the series, People of the Wolf, a long time ago. And it was enjoyable. You know, because that one's about humans first coming to North America. But I just, I don't know, I haven't gotten around to People of the Raven yet. But, you know, maybe someday. And then this last one is another one, which I have not read yet. It's uh, The 10,000 by Paul Kearney. And I heard that this one is basically supposed to be like a humanity fuck yeah story except a fantasy version of it and while humanity fuck yeah stories are usually stupid and dumb that's or, <laughs> stupid and boring and dumb it's because they're really formulaic and maybe by being fantasy it'll be a little bit different but i also again have not read it yet so cannot comment on its quality all right so this one you can't get uh, very much of a good angle on because unfortunately my bed is right here and that's in the way but this is my second shelf which you can see uh in all my all my videos it's right next to me it's pretty much the same as the other one but this one is actually kind of just the leftovers it's not nearly as organized and it's also not full i'll show you the like second and third shelves on the bottom in a minute uh so this one doesn't have much of a theme the way that one was all fantasy and sci-fi uh but a lot of these are just like shitty young adult novels that again didn't really fit anywhere else but i just threw them on here and i have a whole bunch more out there you people make me read the worst shit i swear but, uh, like, we've got Infinity by Sherilyn Kenyon, The Chronicles of Nick. I straight up don't even remember when I got this or why or what it's about, but it is here. <laughs> uh, and then I've got Breathe and Resist, which I talked about months ago. They are bad, but enjoyably bad. And then this little gap right here, uh, that is where the Everneath books are fitting. Like, I have the first one here, you can see, I've done all my notes on it. And then I have the second one, Ever Bound. And actually, I'm going to do something. Do, I'm going to do like a vlog on just the first book uh, for patrons and channel members only because I figure like, hey, may, maybe it'll be interesting to see my full thoughts on that before I have the context of the full series and before I go into like excruciating detail on it. 
And then I have the third book, Ever True, right here, which does not have a jacket on it. Like thrift books, I like you thrift books, but you really gotta be more upfront about hardcover books that don't have the jacket, because it's really annoying to think I've gotten this nice one and then I don't. And then Light Lark, <laughs> enough, enough said about that. Uh, and then I have a couple I haven't read yet. I've got uh, Guardian Angel Academy, which just based on the cover, it looks like complete trash, but it might be fun trash, so I guess we'll see one day. And then Secrets So Deep, which is supposed to be like a weird supernatural murder mystery, or at least that's the vibe I got from the uh, summary. So again, we will see one day. I just don't have anything to say about those. And then I got a bunch of these. These are all like the first book of various series that I just haven't bought the rest for, for one reason or another. Don't you fall over. I'll get to you later. Uh, and so we have Arclight, which I talked about a while ago. This one, uh, I read and own the first book you can see, and the second book I listened to as an audio book from the library, and I just never bothered reading the third one because, like, th this, the setup for this is really, really great, but there's just no conflict until more than halfway through the second book, and that conflict is kind of cool, but it's just, it didn't grab me enough to make me feel like it would be worth reading through all the rest. And then again, these uh, other three are like series that I might get to to make fun of at some point. Like there's Life As We Knew It, which is about the moon coming closer to Earth and then making the world end or something. There's uh, Intertwined, which I actually don't remember what this one's about. What is it? Okay, it's about a special... Okay, after reading the back cover, it seems like it's about a special chosen one. Uh, again, so, some of these I bought so long ago, I don't remember what exactly appealed to them about uh, appealed to me about them to, to begin with and there's shiver which is supposed to be like this weird twilight for furries thing where she falls in love with werewolves instead or something again like th these are all things that are supposed to be like funny bad that i've heard about and i just haven't committed to covering them at some point so i just only have the first book because i just didn't see the point in buying all of them and then here all the rest of this shelf is a bunch of michigan chillers and these are basically like goosebumps, except their conceit is that they all take place in Michigan. Like the first book is Mayhem on Mackinac Island, you know, and it's, you know, they're, they're kind of fun. Again, they're like goosebumps. They're for kids, but they, they have some fun, spooky stuff in there occasionally. And uh, also they do have this weird narrative framing where uh, all of the books are kind of connected. Like at the end of the first book, the main character girl is going to talk to one of her friends and tell her, tell him about the adventure that she just had. And he's like, wait, before you do that, let me tell you about what happened last Christmas to me. And then the next book is about what happened to him last Christmas. And then at the end of that one, he talks to some of his cousins and they're like, oh yeah, last summer we ran into some ghosts. Want to hear about that? And then the third book is uh, them hearing about ghosts. And it just goes on like this throughout the whole series. It's actually, it's a fun way of framing things. All right, so the middle shelf, I just kind of pulled everything off of it so I can show you. Uh, I have Legend by David Gemmel, which is not at all a well-known book. Uh, this was just in, I don't even know if I'll ever read this, but it was just in my dad's stuff when he died. And I was like, eh, you know what, I'll, I'll grab, I'll grab it. It seems like some, uh, excuse me, some like really low cost unknown pulp novel from like the seventies or eighties. And just, I don't know, it, it might be fun. And then, uh... I mean, I guess this is kind of a spoiler, but it doesn't really matter. So Everneath, if you've been paying attention, you know that's going to be my next like really big project that I'm working on right now. After that is going to be Redemption by Will Jordan, who is a YouTuber known as The Critical Drinker, and I've read like 20 pages of this already. It's fucking shit. It's so goddamn bad. And I, and I also just hate that guy, so making fun of his work should be fun. And then this one is actually like a uh, free book I got an ARC copy of. And I wound up not doing a review of it because I just didn't have much to say. It's called The Never-Ending End of the World. It was actually uh, the first book that was published by Campfire, who are my lovely friends who have uh, sponsored me on more than one occasion. And it was written by Anne Christie. And uh, the book is basically about one day there's some sort of crazy event which causes a bunch of people to get stuck in time loops. Like, there's some people who are not in them and they're just walking around normal, but then all these other people are stuck in like 10 second loops or 10 minute loops in some cases, like some of them are bigger. And they're just going around doing the exact same stuff over and over again. And the book takes place over the course of like 20 or 25 years. 
and it, it's like a great concept but nothing that actually happens in the story ever grabbed me even if the concept did so i just i just didn't have much to say about it uh then next to that we have fourth wing no just not nothing nothing there and then uh if you saw my angel fire video months and months ago uh you'll rem remember that i had that that was part of the giant pile of angel <laughs> young adult romances i bought years ago uh, and because Angel Fire was, number one, not really the type of book I thought it would be, but also, number two, not that bad, I figured I should just buy a different series of uh, shitty angel young adult romance book or books to go over. Uh, and so I have the first one here. It's Angel Burn by L.A. Weatherly, and so that'll, that'll be the last one. And then I have a couple of lit RPGs that I got from Amazon. It's just these. And lit RPG I thought was going to be something kind of like, you know, the fighting fantasy I mentioned earlier, uh, but it's really not. It's just like a regular story, but occasionally they mention RPG stats, like like it's a video game, which I don't know. Maybe I'll get to these at some point and enjoy them. Maybe I'll hate them. I don't know, but I just, uh, I was kind of disappointed they wound up being very different than what I thought they would be, and so I just, I, I haven't gotten to them. Okay, and now I have brought out uh, the entirety of the bottom shelf, because again, you can't see it there. Uh, and so first we have Berserk. I only have the first volume of it here, but not much to say. Phenomenal manga, but horribly dark. And then I also have uh, Gunblaze West, which is another manga. This one was written by uh, Nobuhiro Watsuki, who also wrote Rurouni Kenshin and is also a pedophile. Uh, but, you know, I, I bought him used, so he didn't get any money from it. And honestly, uh, it's, a, it's a fun series. You know, it got canceled after only three volumes. But I, I can't pretend it's not a lot of fun to go through. And that is the entirety of my manga collection. And then we have the Angel Fire trilogy, which I mentioned before. Like, if that looks familiar. Uh, and not a lot to say about that, you know. <laughs> it's a pretty standard story in most ways, but it's also enjoyable and not too stupid. And then we have a couple of books I haven't read yet. Like, I have Helldivers, which I read the beginning of this, and it was pretty solid, but I just, again, I... I keep repeating myself but I just I got caught up in other stuff and wound up not being able to finish it but I'll, I'll, I'll want to go back and finish it at some point it it looks like fun it I remember it being fun I got Airframe by Michael Crichton what is there to say you know Michael Crichton was great he made amazing thrillers and I I don't know if I've read any of his books that I would say are bad I've read some that are better than others but none that are really bad and then I have The Iron Widow by uh, Shiron J. Zhao. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And they are a YouTuber as well. Like, that's why I picked this up, because I was like, okay, a YouTuber book. Let's see if it's not shit or not. But I just haven't gotten around to it quite yet. And then I have City of Brass. This one, uh, again, I haven't read it yet, but I heard that it's one where the love interest actually turns out to be a villain, and they, like, stick to it. They don't just make him kind of a bad boy anti-hero or anything like that. Like, they stick to it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to uh, know the whole story going into it, but, yeah, like, I don't think I would have picked it up if it weren't for that. And then this one, which I had sitting way over there for some reason, is Bone Shaker. I have tried to read this, like, three times. I've never gotten more than 40 pages in. It's like, it's like a weird steampunk story where the city of uh, Seattle, is it? Uh, where the city is walled off because this gas came out of the ground which turned people into zombies and just that that sounds kind of cool but then the first 40 pages like nothing fucking happens and i just I, i've never been able to get into it i just i just can't maybe it's good maybe it's bad i don't know i don't see myself ever finishing it to be honest uh this is anime 5e this is just a rule book for an rpg it's basically uh, anime 5e is like a, a modified version of dungeons and dragons fifth edition but it has like anime rules and anime logic to it. My friends and I actually just completed a campaign with that. It was a lot of fun, so check it out if you get a chance. And then I have uh, all of my, like, survival guide books, you know? So I've got uh, the Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks and the World War Z, which is the companion piece to it, I guess? I don't know. But both phenomenal books, especially World War Z. Like, if you haven't read World War Z, seriously, check it out. It's one of the few books I've ever read where it really does feel like all of humanity is about to die uh and the zombie survival guide is a fun read but it's also like creepily plausible because there just so, is so much commitment to detail you know 
And then I've got uh, the Kaiju Survival Guide, which doesn't go into nearly as much uh, detail as the Zombie Survival Guide, but it's about fighting and surviving against Kaijus, which are like big Godzilla-esque monsters instead. And then we have the Vampire Combat Manual, which is not great, to be honest. I, I just, it's not great. I don't have a whole lot to add there, but it just, it's trying to be the zombie survival guide, and it almost succeeds in a couple of ways, but it just, I, there's something about it that's missing. It doesn't uh, dive into detail in a way that makes it creepy and plausible, but also makes it seem like, okay, this is a disaster, but I can survive if I'm prepared. It makes it feel like, yeah, the world's against you and you're fucked. So it just doesn't quite work, but there's parts of it that are kind of fun. And uh, that is it for all the bookshelves in my room. I have one more out in my living area, and the sound in there is probably going to be kind of echoey, so I apologize in advance for that. And hello, welcome to my living room, which like I said, had it's echoey, has bad sound, also doesn't have great lighting, but <laughs> you can see I have a whole big bookshelf here. And this one is much more organized than uh, some of my others were. So for starters, on the top shelf, these are all my really weird books that I've collected over the years. So I have like a couple of celebrity books on this side, like Talon of God by Wesley Snipes and Ghost Flight by Bear Grylls, which I haven't read yet, but I mean, <laughs> bad celebrity books, I, th those are fun. <laughs> I want to check them out. Then we have like these two, which I've talked about, you know, Steven Seagal and Saddam Hussein both did, they decided to write novels at some point. Neither of them are good, but <laughs> they exist. And normally I take the tabs out after I'm done uh, talking about something, if I put tabs in it, but this one, I, I had to keep them in there. You know, I, I need to remind myself and others just how much shit is contained in this thing. I hate it so much. And then we got, like, uh, Michael Bloomberg's daughter's horse books there, which are kind of fun, but I don't have that much to say about them, especially considering I did a video on them years ago, and I didn't have much to say in that either. And then, obviously, the infamous Onion trilogy, Onision's books, like... I had to get physical copies, okay? I read them online, but I just, I, I had to get them, <laughs> okay? I need these to be in my hands. And I just, I, I love that they exist. To be honest, as much as I despise them, I love that they exist. And then I've got, uh, from a couple other YouTubers, I've got like Class of 86 by Brad Jones, AKA Cinema Snob, which I did talk about. It was, it was all right. Uh, I, I haven't talked about Ghost Hunters Adventure Club and The Secret of the Grand Chateau which was written by Aaron Hansen of The Game Grumps. At least I haven't talked about it very much. But that's just because I didn't have much to say. It was just really, really funny. And there was a lot of stuff in there that made me laugh, but I just didn't have much to say beyond, yeah, it's really funny, it made me laugh. And then next to that, we have the Save the Pearls books, which, uh, again, I, I kept the tabs in this one, at least for now, because just like, what is, what is there to say about those that hasn't already been said, man? And then I have a couple books from a guy named Phil Elmore. First, we have Flashlight for Fighting, which is all about using a flashlight as a self-defense weapon. <laughs> I don't know how well that would work, but, you know, it's, it's an idea. And then we have Street Sword, Practical Use of the Long Blade for Self-Defense. And this one took me a really, really long time to track down. Like, there were very few copies available for a long time, and I think he did a reprinting recently, so there might be some now. But I just, and yes, I will do something on this soon, uh, as soon as I can. I just, it, again, things keep getting in the way, but it's a really funny, fun book. Because it's just like, yeah, you're carrying a katana around with you. Use that to defend yourself. What, what's, what's the worst that could happen? And then uh, this is another like weird fan fiction one, but some of you might be familiar with it because Insanity, Jeff the Killer, uh, Jenny Nicholson did a video on it years and years ago. And then there's also a sequel called... Uh, Welcome to the Mansion. I forgot the title there for a second. I had to look at it. Uh, and she never talked about this one because according to her, uh, people saw her video and like harassed the author of the original book. And like, why would you do that? You guys are assholes. And so for that reason, uh, like I have read the first book. I haven't read the second. Uh, even when I'm done reading the second, I'm probably never going to do anything on it because if that girl doesn't want the internet's attention on her, then I'm not going to bring it on her. So... Yeah, that's your fault. And then we have Jesus Christ Zombie Killer. Again, I talked about this a while ago. Like, there's so many of these where if you people leave a comment saying, hey, James, you should do a video on that. And if, if I've already done it, and it's really obvious that you never fucking even bothered searching a little bit, I will fucking ban you. I'm not joking. Don't test me on this. I will fucking ban you if you do that. But yeah, Jesus Christ Zombie Killer. It's a 
Weird book because it's about Jesus fighting a necromancer, but the weirdest part about it is that it's just, it's not bad. Like, I'm not even joking. It's genuinely a fun, decent little read with some actual stakes and drama and stuff. And I feel similarly about Struck, which again, I talked about earlier this year. It's about a girl who is addicted to being struck by lightning. And then there's a cult that tries to recruit her because they think that she can help them end the world or something. It's a weird, weird book, okay? It's very bizarre, but it's a lot of fun and I genuinely enjoyed it. And also uh, between Struck, Red Queen, and Fourth Wing, I have read three young adult novels this year, which are about a teenage girl who has an affinity for lightning. I don't really know what to do with that information, but it exists. Uh, and then I have Legend of Ra and the Muggles, which I haven't read yet, but the only reason I know it exists is because uh, the lady who wrote it tried to sue J.K. Rowling because she said that Harry Potter was just a ripoff of this, which it's not. <laughs> like, the word muggles is there, but muggle is a real word. Like, muggle means an ignorant person, so... Yeah, sorry. No, no you can't copyright something from the dictionary. <laughs> But I haven't read it yet. It looks like it might be kind of weird and fun. And then this one is, I, I, I talked about it years and years ago. Like I'm talking 2017, maybe 2018. It's called Get More by Nia Stevens. And um, it's a choose your own adventure novel of a sort, but it's just really weird. It's just about a teenage girl going on dates with dudes, which doesn't sound that strange. But then there's like moments where a dude breaks up with her because her toes look weird or uh, her kind of, possibly committing a murder at one point and then it's just completely glossed over like it's it's a weird book but it made me laugh a lot and so like it's it's going to stay like with me you know I'm not giving it away it's going to stay in my little cabinet of curiosities as it were uh and then I have a couple of like really small mass market paperbacks which eh, most of these aren't even that weird really but there's something about them that I feel they just belong on that shelf at least for now like I have Leviathan did that a couple months ago it's just about it's weird because, like, the guy who wrote it genuinely believes that humans and dinosaurs live side by side. Like, he's just a complete fucking dipshit. Uh, he's also an asshole in general, so he's just a bad person, so I don't feel bad uh, making fun of him like that. And his book's just terrible as well. And then I have Doppelgangster, which, again, I think I talked about it at, like, 2018, maybe beginning of 2019. It was a long time ago. But it's pretty standard urban fantasy stuff. Like, just there's some weird magical murders going on and our heroine gets dragged into it so she has to go investigate and help him out. And then there's Final Exam by uh, A. Bates, which you may have seen this cover before in a meme because the book itself, nothing special. I've read it. it there's, there's nothing to it, okay? It's like a teenage Goosebumps-esque book about a murderer. But uh, on the front cover, it says, if you fail, you'll just die, and then it shows a school, and you can very clearly see that the name of it is Columbine High School. <laughs> now, this book came out before the thing happened at Columbine High School, but it is still very funny. Hey, I adjusted the camera angle. Hopefully this is a little better. So after that, we go down to this next shelf. This is all young adult stuff. You know, mostly just shitty young adult stuff, but it's all young adult stuff. So I have the Red Queen books all right here. So I have the four main ones and then Broken Throne, which is the spinoff. It has like, I didn't talk about it much in my video, but it has like uh, a couple of novellas, which aren't really necessary to understanding the story, but they are inoffensive in how bad they are. So I, there's just nothing to say. And it also has a bunch of like supplementary materials about the world that this takes place in. So that was, that was kind of fun <laughs> to go through at least. But I do, again, just want to point out, King's Cage has no jacket on it. I bought it from Thrift Books. Thrift Books, you need to be better about telling people when there's not a jacket on the freaking book that they're buying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, they're normally a very good source, a very good place to shop, but I just, I, I can't stand that they keep doing that. Uh, there's The Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. Again, talked about it before. Uh, this is, again, it's Stephanie Meyer, the lady who wrote the Twilight books, and... For why is the camera focusing on my nose? Why is, why is it doing that? And this was written after Twilight, you know? It wasn't when she was some unknown author, but for some reason no one's ever talked about this, even though it apparently sold pretty well. And it's, I mean, again, it's Stephanie Meyer, but she tried to write a spy thriller, and uh, it, didn't, it didn't go very well, but, you know, she tried. And then I have The Last Dragon Princess, which 
I, I, again, I read a little bit of this years ago, but I would need to start over if I tried it again. I've heard this one's good. It actually doesn't look half bad. I remember when my, when my channel was first starting to get big, the author actually emailed me asking if I wanted a copy for review. I said no at the time, but I later bought this. And I uh, just, yeah, I don't have a whole lot else to add there. It's just, I, I want to get around to it at some point because I've heard it's enjoyable. And then right next to that, we have the entire Evermore series. Like all of this is just the Evermore series. Like you can see, oh, I still have all these tabs. This is, these books are so bad, but they're so much fun <laughs> in being bad. <laughs> like again, just watch my video on it if you want to know more, but God, I, I love these for being bad so much. Like there, there's just so much fun. There's so much dumb bullshit that happens in them. And it's just, it's, oh God, I love it. It's beautiful. I have nothing bad to say <laughs> about Evermore. <laughs> Well, I have plenty of bad things to say about Evermore, but you know, I, I prefer not to say them. And then I have Little Monsters, which I haven't read, but I did read one other book by the author Kara Thomas, which is called uh, The Cheerleaders. It's actually on the back here. Uh, and I don't believe I ever talked about that, at least not very much, but The Cheerleaders was a very good, enjoyable book, you know, because it's, uh, it's one of those things where it's pretending to be a murder mystery, but then when you read it, the murder is really just an inciting incident so that we can get into this specific character's life and get inside their head and poke around. And it's really just about the drama of their existence. And normally that would annoy me, but it worked really well in The Cheerleaders. So I figured, hey, Little Monsters is another book by the same author, also about murder. I figured, eh, why not? Give it a shot. And then I have the Blue Blood series. I have, well, okay, I have six out of the seven books here. The other one is actually in the mail. It'll be here soon, but it's Blue Bloods by Melissa De La Cruz. And this, at least this first book, uh, I bought as the part of the pile of uh, Angel YA romance books uh, many years ago now. Uh, and so this is gonna be the last series of the original pile that I go through. It'll be a couple months from now, but I will go through it, don't worry. Uh, and then after that, I'll do Angel Burn. And this one, from what I heard, it, it has angels, vampires, and immortal humans all together. So I'm like, okay, that sounds like a freaking train wreck. Let's see what happens. Maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't. And then this is one I talked about a while ago as well. This is Obsidian. This one, okay, it's not about angels, but I did buy it with that uh, pile of Angel YA novels. It's basically just Twilight, but with aliens. And I read the first book, okay, th this one, and I enjoyed it well enough, actually. It wasn't terrible. Like there are parts to make fun of and stuff, but overall I just, eh. It, it was enjoyable, but I didn't really feel like going on either out of genuine enjoyment, and I also didn't think that there was enough here to really make fun of and uh, be entertaining while doing that. So I didn't read the rest of the series, and that video didn't get a whole lot of uh, attention, so I just figured, eh, whatever, I'll just end it off here. And I don't know, maybe the rest of the series is completely batshit, but well, I guess I'll never know. All right, and now I'm on my knees. So this, uh, this whole shelf, this is all nonfiction stuff. So the majority of it, like from here to here, this is history. So I've got like a complete illustrated history of the Inca Empire. Okay, maybe this one technically isn't history, but it's Your Movie Sucks by Roger Ebert. And it's just like a collection of his movie reviews for movies that he really didn't like. And they're, they're hilarious to go through. Like, man, th this guy, he won a Pulitzer Prize for a reason. He was a very, very good writer. He was a very good critic. And I feel like all critics should aspire to be a little bit more like him. Uh, and then I've got like stuff about the Battle of Stalingrad. I have the Bronze Lie, which is all about uh, how the myth of Spartan warrior supremacy is, you know, a myth. Uh, and then I've got, you know, some stuff about the Crusades, a brief history of Ireland. This one I haven't read yet, but it's a generation of sociopaths, how the baby boomers betrayed America. And I don't know, I, I really want to get around to it because yes, they, they, they did as a whole, they did. And then I've got Hooligans of Kandahar, which is uh, the author's experiences in Afghanistan. You know, just stuff like that. Nothing too crazy going on there. And then this last uh, chunk over here. Well, okay, first of all, I have an easy guide to the Hawaiian language, which I just bought when I was in Hawaii many years ago. And that's just like some phrases and stuff. But then this other chunk right here is a bunch of books about uh, martial arts. So I have like the Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto Musashi. Uh, it's translated, obviously. And then I've got uh, 
this one, which the title alone gets me, it's called Raising Cain. <laughs> and it's just about, uh, which is a real thing, by the way. There are martial arts which use a cane in self-defense. And, you know, I've been poking through this a little bit. I, I, I need to spend more time studying it, but it is a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> and uh, I just, again, I love the title, so I had to buy it just for that. And then I have, like, one on, like, the Marine Corps martial arts program and stuff. So they just... Uh, it's not a super big collection, but I want to expand on it eventually. Okay, and then we reach the final two shelves. This one is just fantasy and science fiction, right? So over here I have uh, A Memory of Light, which is the final Wheel of Time book, and it's also the only one I actually own. I've read all of them. I only own this one. And I think I bought it like the week it came out as well. Like, uh, I'll get around to, excuse me, the rest of them eventually, but I don't know, I just... I'm, ne I'm probably never going to reread that series because it's just so long and obnoxious at times. But I don't know, I, I kind of want to own the whole thing just so I can say I do, but I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, not a high priority for me right now. And then I've got all the Stormlight Archive books here. Like, it's, it's only four of them. They're taking up this much of the freaking show. <laughs> you can see. It's ridiculous. Then I have House of Leaves, which I have heard nothing but good things about, but I just haven't gotten around to reading yet. So, got uh, very little to say there. Oh, hold on. Don't go in there properly. There we go. And then I've got The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, which I read a little bit of. I couldn't get into. Uh, then I have, I might read it one day, but <laughs> couldn't get into it. Then I have De-Evolution by Max Brooks. I've talked about this in the past. It is, I mean, again, it's Max Brooks, wrote World War Z, The Zombie Survival Guide. He's a fantastic writer. This one's about Bigfoot. Specifically, it's about a bunch of people who are trapped uh, after a big disaster, and they're surrounded by a pack of Bigfoots, B Bigfoots, Big Feet, Bigfooters, I don't know, whatever, they're surrounded by a pack of them, and they're trying to survive that. It's, it's great. It's a lot, a lot of fun. I, I was super into it. Uh, and then I have a couple more I haven't read. I have Trail of Lightning, uh, and I have Aeon Legion Labyrinth. Aeon Legion Labyrinth was actually written by J.P. Bobine, who also runs the Terrible Writing Advice YouTube channel, so that's part of why I wanted to check it out, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. I've got a couple of, like, I don't know how you would describe these. I have, like, The Jedi Path, which is a book about, like, how to be a Jedi, which it's, like, an in-universe guide on how to be a Jedi. It's kind of it's kind of fun. I, I keep, I'm keeping it, and I want to get one that's also, like, the Sith Code as well. And then there's How to Survive a Horror Movie. This one's, like, more of a cheeky, uh, um, I don't know, a cheeky guide on how to survive various horror movie monsters and stuff if you find yourself stuck among them. And then I have a couple more I haven't read. I have Mexican Gothic, I have the Natanz Directive, and I have Malice by John Gwynn. Uh, again, all those look kind of fun, but I haven't gotten to them yet. And then I have just a Breach of Peace and Rebel's Creed by Daniel Green, which I have read and talked about, and I think they're enjoyable enough, but, you yeah, know, just uh, <laughs> nothing crazy going on there. And finally, we reach the final shelf of our tour, which is this one right here. Uh, so, right here, I have a whole bunch of Calvin and Hobbes comics, you know? And, I mean, I love Calvin and Hobbes. It's, a, it's an amazing comic strip. They're, it's surprisingly smart at times. It's surprisingly heartfelt at times. It's very, very funny. I, I love Calvin and Hobbes. And then, uh, again, this is just more fantasy and sci-fi that I couldn't find a place for. So I have, like, Children of Time, which I never did a full video on, but, like, it's a great book. It's really, really good. And then I have part of the Expanse series here. Like I have the first one, and then I have six, seven, eight, and nine. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can see how big they are, how much space they take up. So it's kind of, it's kind of hard to justify buying them after I've already read them, and I don't feel like rereading them anytime soon. Uh, and then I have Killer Be Killed, which I've talked about a little bit before. It's a comic series. It's only four volumes long. I have all four of them, and it's fantastic because it's just about a guy who uh, tries to commit suicide and survives, but then a demon comes along and says, hey, I saved your life, and that means you have to kill one person for me every month, and it's just, it's, it's really good. It's, it's ambiguous about whether the demon's even real or not. It's, it's great. I have uh, The Legend of the Hero, which is, I believe this is technically fan fiction, but it is a Legend of Zelda book, which is, again, an in-universe guide about, like, different monsters and stuff that have existed uh, in the game series. And then I have uh, The World of Ice and Fire, which is this giant atlas and history book about, again, the world of Game of Thrones, the world of Ice and Fire, but it's written uh, as if it was by, or written by, uh, 
historians in this world. So it has like parts of it that are really sparse and stuff. It's just, it's, it's interesting. I like it. And then all the rest of this over here, these are all RPG source books slash rule books. So I have the Dragon Age RPG, which I haven't gotten to play yet. I have Starfinder, which is just Pathfinder, but science fiction. And I haven't been able to play it yet. I have the Wheel of Time RPG, which is just a modified version of Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. And I haven't gotten a chance to play that. And then I have a couple of uh, Dungeons and Dragons books. I have uh, the Player's Handbook, Monster Manual, The Dungeon Master's Guide, and A Baron, Rising from the Last War, which has like some really interesting, cool stuff in it. And that's about all. I hope you enjoyed this uh, overly long, overly in-depth look at uh, my bookshelves. Hopefully uh, nobody makes too much fun of me for what I have on there. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Goodbye. Hello, everyone. You're still watching? Well, that's pretty cool. You see all these names here? These are my patrons. They're the people that send me money once a month over on Patreon. My $10 and up patrons are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Chibs Ahoy, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Flax, James M, Karkat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Microphone, Mistboy, Mitsimona, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Psych XS, Celine, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Ve Victus, Vimek Zol, and Wesley. Who could ever forget Wesley? And you know what? Thanks, all of you. If you can't afford to, you know, get access, early access to videos and stuff, then that's fine. Just like the video, comment on it, share it around, annoy all your friends with it. You know, that that's cool too. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And uh, if you have subscribed, then I guess like unsubscribe and then resubscribe. I don't know if that does anything, but it makes me feel pretty cool. Anyways, goodbye.